each and every one of you guys. Thank God for all of our family logging in and joining in. I thank God for our magnificent and mighty praise team, our musicians. We have the best band in the land. Amen. And I thank God for their faithfulness. I thank God for your faithfulness, uh, Cherry Grove and our guests. Again, I do want to say, uh, as you're turning to Psalms number 27, Psalms number 27, I do want to say again, we apologize. Had a few technical difficulties, but we've gotten them ironed out now. And uh, we thank God for you sticking with us. Amen. Sometimes things happen and you know how life is. Sometimes uh, that's beyond your control. But we do know God will give you a spirit to push on anyhow. And as you all are looking on now, all of our Facebook family, listen, let everyone know. Shoot them a text or call them. Let them know the Zoom is working. It's back on and it should be uh, working to use the the same login that previously uh, they were using. Amen. Psalms number 27 and verse number 13. Amen. Uh, and, and Satan, I believe, has tried us today because he know God has a word for somebody on today. Amen. Psalms number 27, one verse tonight on our wow service, one verse tonight, verse number 13. And the word of the Lord, it says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. God bless you. I want to preach tonight about God is good. God is good. Beloved, you don't have to look very far to see God is good. I'm going to press for wine and try it one more time. You don't have to look very far to see that God, he is good. Third time is a charm. You don't have to look that far for you to see that the Lord is good. The word good, beloved, is a little Greek word called kalos. Uh, you spell it K-A-L-O-S in the Greek. It's spelled Kappa Alpha Lambda Omicron Sigma Kalos, which means this. It means that which is pleasing unto God. In other words, when we say God is good, what we're really saying is that God will do things that's pleasing unto him. And I don't know how you feel about it. I don't know who this word is for, but I've made up in my mind that if it's all right with God, it's certainly all right with me. I want to tell somebody, God, he's good. Matter of fact, you can look around and there are three ways you can know easily God is good. Number one, look at your scenery. Number two, look in the scriptures. But then number three, look at your story. Stick both hands out. I'm going to throw it again so it won't be an incomplete pass. Number one, just look at your scenery. Number two, look at the scriptures. But number three, look at your story. Talk to me somebody. When you look at your scenery, you can see God's goodness everywhere. Talk to me somebody. Somebody. Matter of fact, nobody but a good God can create a world by talking and never touching. Nobody but a good God can say on day one, let there be heaven and earth and a world showed up. Nobody but a good God can say on day two, let there be water, two oxygens, two hydrogens, one oxygen that was a gas and turned into a liquid. Nobody but a good God on day three can say, let there be vegetation, collard greens showed up, mustard greens, squash, yams, cabbage, broccoli, talk to me somebody, lima beans, pinto beans, black eyed peas, they all showed Showed up on day four, he said, Let there be cosmos and the sun, the moon, and the stars. They had to show up on day five. A good God said, Let there be fish in the sea, fowl in the air. And next thing you know, 
catfish start swimming. Perch and brim, crappie, do I have a witness? Bass, buffalo, group of redfish, halibut, tuna, do I have a witness here? The chicken start clucking and the turkeys, they start singing because God is a good God. On day six, he said, let there be man, you and I showed up. And on day seven, he said, let there be rest in a leather seat recliner, a 70 inch flat screen television, remote control in one hand, a cold Coca-Cola in the other hand. He cut it on ESPN, kicked his feet up, sat back and enjoyed everything he created. All I'm trying to tell you, God is a good God. Nobody but a good God, beloved, can let birds have a nest in a tree and then, beloved, give them for dinner a free worm to eat. Nobody but a good God can let a squirrel go from tree to tree and don't have to worry about a mortgage because its rent is for free. Nobody but a good God can let a dog have any other female dog that it wants and then can use as an alibi. It's nothing but the dog in me. Nobody but a good God can take the palm of his hand, scoop up every valley, push up every mountain, cap it with the whiteness of snow like gray hair on an old man, dress it down in a tailor-made green suit made out of green grass and trees because the God that we serve is good. We serve a good God. You can see God is good. All you got to do is look at your scenery. But then you can look in the scriptures. How many of you know, beloved, the word of God is your power. And whenever life and Lucifer gang up on you, they try to tear you down, the Lord will give you a scripture that'll pull you right back up. <laughs> when life and Lucifer try to tell you that you can't, the Lord will send you Philippians 4.13 that said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. When life and Lucifer hit your pocketbook, they hit your wallet, your money is acting funny, your change is looking strange. God has seen your Philippians 4, 19, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory. When life and Lucifer, beloved, put burdens on your back, they put mess on your mind, talk to me somebody, you don't know if you're coming or going, God will send you a scripture, Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm just trying to paint the picture to encourage somebody tonight. Don't you quit on God. Don't you give up. Don't you give out. You serve a good God and you can see his goodness even in the scriptures. But not only can you see that God is a good God, y'all. Even in your surroundings, even in your scenery, even in the scripture, but then you can look at your own story. Somebody watching me tonight, go on and give God praise right where you are because you, you got a story. Matter of fact, you are a story of the goodness of God. Matter of fact, beloved, go on and testify and give the devil a black eye that what you're dealing with now is not the first time you've had to deal with it. And if God brought you out before, he's the same God that can bring you out right now wish somebody could say amen right there. This is not the first time you've had bills overdue. This ain't the first time you had more month than you had money. This is not the first time that you didn't have enough bills to pay your bills. You didn't have enough dollars to make no sense. You didn't have enough ducats to put in the bucket. This ain't the first time you had to rob Peter in order to pay Paul and you've never met either one of them. This is not the first time that you figured out Uncle Sam is not your uncle, but he's stealing half of your check in Texas and he won't pay you back. But if God keep your light still cutting on, your phone still ringing, food still cooking, the gas still burning, your car still cranking, your children still praying and playing, you ought to lift your hand, you ought to open your mouth right where you are and give God praise that my God is good. Yeah. I won't encourage somebody 
even through the pains of a pandemic, your God is still good. Don't you quit on God. I don't care if you got your stimulus check number two yet or not, but don't you quit on God. You serve a God that's good all of the time. That's what the text is really saying. When you look at Psalms number 27, this go bless you tonight. Psalms number 27, y'all, is a psalm of confidence. David writes this to express his confidence in God that even though I'm going through a situation right now, but God is so good that if God brought me out of problems before, I don't have to get drunk. I don't have to get high. I don't have to quit. I don't have to jump over a bridge. I don't have to cuss nobody out. I don't have to throw in the towel. I got a testimony if he did it before he's able to do it again right now. David said, I've been through some things with God. David said, I got some experiences with God. If you check my record, my resume and my reputation, David said, you can remember when I was a little boy, it was the Lord that anointed and appointed me king as a child, which means that God will keep you when you're too young to keep yourself. David said, I can even remember uh, when, when I was doing the work of God, I was keeping my daddy's sheep. And while I'm out there with the sheep, I had to get dirty with the sheep. I had to take care of the sheep. Matter of fact, I started smelling like the sheep, which means that God would take care of you even in dirty situations. David said, I can remember uh, in my life, when I got grown, I was able to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. And as we we're bringing it back, we hit a bump in a road. Uzziah tried to help us out. He tried to catch the Ark and God struck him dead. David said, it scared me half to death. So what I did, I left the Ark at Obed Edom's house. I wish I had some Bible readers out there today. And at Obed Edom's house, the rumor got out that the presence of God was blessing his life. And David said, if he can bless Obed Edom's house, if I can just get it to Jerusalem, the Lord can bless my house. David said, I got some experience with my God that if God did all of that, even though I'm dealing with enemies right now, I got confidence that my God, he's going to bring me out. That's somebody's word that's watching tonight. Beloved, you can't quit now. You can't give up now. Don't go back to no old sinful ways. Child of God, if the Lord has brought you through your past, he's brought you through your other pain, if he's made a way for you before, don't you quit now because God, he can do it again. God is a good God. How you know, preacher? I tell you this, only two little points, and I promise we out of here. Only two good points. How you know God is good when things seem like it's so bad? I tell you how I know God is good. He's the God of your past, but then he's the God of your present. Let me try this again. He, he's a God of your past. Watch what the text says. The text says, I would have fainted had I not seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. In other words, David said that before I quit and give the enemy victory over my life, he said, I can recall and remember what God has done for me in my past. I want to talk to somebody. Everybody got a past. And beloved, I don't care how painful your past is. Don't you put it on pause, but let it keep on playing. Because here's what you got to understand. It's your past is what's pushing you with God's power. Talk to me if you can. Whatever God brought you through in the past, God is using it as your platform to give you power to handle your present situations. Let me try it this way. 
uh, one day this husband uh, went to the jewelry store to buy a nice piece of jewelry for his wife. They were celebrating uh, their anniversary and he went to go buy some pearls. And when he bought, went to get the pearls, he stopped by uh, this mother of pearl necklace. But when he looked at the price, he said, Ooh, this costs too much. Out of nowhere, the necklace spoke back. The necklace said, I'm worth it. <laughs> the man started looking around and wondering who was that talking. The necklace spoke up again and said, I'm worth it. The man looked at the necklace to his amazement and said, how so? The necklace said, what you don't understand is that I have a past that I've come over. He said, I started out at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> he said, matter of fact, I'm the one that helped Drake write his smash hit song. I started from the bottom, now I'm here. <laughs> I want to have some help out there. Yeah, he said, I, the person said, I started out at the bottom of the ocean. I was nothing but a liquid inside of a clam. And every time the waves of the waters beat across the clam, the clam secreted more liquid. <laughs> and as the waves kept on beating across the clam, the liquid, it started to get hard. The waves kept on beating and the more the waves beat on the clam, the harder I got until I formed into a pearl. <laughs> he said, then the fisherman came by, poured me out, and then put me in the fire. And the fire burned off my impurities and my dirtiness. The pearl necklace said, the reason I cost so much is because I've been through so much. And there's somebody watching me. That was your praise point. That was your shout stop right there. That you ought to look back over your life and you ought to give the devil a good black eye and say, the reason I cost so much is because I've been through so much. The reason I got to praise him so much is because God has brought me out of so much. The reason I got to testify so much is because God has brought me out of so much. The reason I got to lift my hand and tell God thank you so much is because God has brought me out of so much. The reason I got to give my tithe and offering so much is because God has brought me out of so much. The reason why I got to lift up the name of Jesus so much is because God has brought me out of so much. Yes. Beloved, he's the God of your past. Watch this. I see, I see the proof, but I see the product. <laughs> oh Lord, tonight. I see, I see the proof. David said, i tell you how I know God is good. It's because David said, I got proof. How many of you know that's watching? You are proof of the goodness of God yourself. Here's how I know. Verse number one, David said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. <laughs> he said, whom shall I fear? David said, the reason why I'm proof that God is good, watch the disco bless you, is because David said, I know that I've been saved. <laughs> I wish somebody could shout right there. I know a lot of us as pastors and preachers seemingly have gotten away from preaching about the bona fide, the basics of salvation, of the fact that we have been saved. But this little country bald head preacher right here in the hood at Cherry Grove, that's our ministry, that's our mantra, that's our message. Thank God we know that we have been saved. David said, I'm proof of the good goodness of God because the Lord he saved my life somebody ought to give God praise because if you've been born again if you are a blood bought believer if you have been baptized in the blood of the lamb if you are saved sanctified sealed unto the day of redemption you are proof that God has been good the only reason we got saved is because the Lord kept us alive long enough for us 
us to give ourselves back to him. I wish somebody could help me right now. You could have died in the accident. You could have died in the abuse. You could have died from the attack. Could have died from the cancer. Could have died in that car. You could have died in the club that Friday night. You could have died from the coronavirus. You could have 